In the first season of the television show, Jack Ryan, there is a secondary storyline that weaves in and out. It is that of the wife of the antagonist to Jack Ryan. Um, the wife's name is Hanine. Without going into the specifics of the show, I, I want to tell you a little bit about Hanine. She's a mother of three who has come to realize that the life that her husband is living and the people he associates with were putting her life and that of her children at risk. So unbeknownst to her husband, she sought out the help of her uncle for fake IDs and passport for her and her children. She escaped because she couldn't simply just leave her husband. It's, it is not a part of her culture. Her culture would not allow it. So her and her children embark on this harrowing journey with their false IDs, fake passport that shows them to be people that they're not, the, you know, they're claiming to be people that they're not, and lying at every turn so that they can survive. Friends, sometimes a lie is the best thing. That's a line from a Tracy Chapman song. Sometimes a lie is the best thing. It's from a song entitled Telling Stories from the album of the same name. I think I froze for a minute the first time I heard that line. It, um, it was, I was thinking, what? It's not only okay to lie, but sometimes it's the best thing in a situation. I became a little fascinated with this concept because to me, it named something I had sensed all along and had been maybe uncomfortable about admitting. Most of us have been indoctrinated with the belief that it is wrong to lie. We are taught this. We are taught we should avoid it at all, at all costs. We teach the gen next generation this. We, um, we expect the truth in our personal life as well as our professional lives. But it's not as simple as that, is it? It is actually quite a complex thing when you think about it. We, at least some of us, tell lies to people every day as we exchange pleasantries. You look great today, we say, when that might be the furthest thing from our mind. Or I'll call you right back when we don't intend to, nor are we even expected to. Yes, we say these things. We, we tell little lies that we don't mean to in the name of social etiquette. But that's not the kind of lie that I'm talking about. That is not at all the kind of lie that I mean when I am implying that sometimes a lie is the best thing. And I understand how risky of an idea this could be when you consider the times we live in. We live in an age of alternate truth, fake news, post-truth politics. Yes, I do recognize how risky it is to say that sometimes a lie could be the best thing. And to make matters worse, there are times when we lie out of vanity and pride, times when we are not feeling brave enough to fess up and be truthful, or we want to get out of an embarrassing situation. And again, those are not the type of lies I'm talking about either. I am talking about 
life-saving situations like that of Hanin's. You might be tempted to dismiss her because her story is fictional and therefore too fantastical maybe to use, to point out, to use an example for truth-telling or lying. However, Hanin's circumstances are no different from that of the many refugees at our borders that we hear about, right? Fleeing their homelands due to dire conditions and seeking asylum. And even after they tell so many lies to cross the borders and enter the country, they still might have to continue to lie in order to keep themselves and their families from starving. Sometimes a lie can mean safe harbor, decent shelter, food. Harriet Tubman, the American abolitionist and political activist, during a 10-year period at the height of slavery in the South, made 19 trips in that territory and led over 300 people, 300 enslaved people to Canada and out of slavery. I wonder how many lies she and the other conductors had to tell or embody for the Underground Railroad to be successful. And how many other people lied in both words and deeds to law enforcement officers so that those slaves could live and be spared a life of torture and misery? Sometimes a lie can mean freedom. Oskar Schindler, the German industrialist who was also a member of the Nazi party. 1,200 Jewish lives were saved or made better because of the lies he told and the briberies he committed during World War II. If not for those false utterances and actions, those souls might have ended up in gas chambers or shot dead on the streets, or otherwise tortured. Sometimes a lie can save a life. I read an article about Pope Francis in the National Catholic Register recently where he recounted a story about where he, well, he, when he was still a young priest in Argentina, he kept a young man from being wrongfully imprisoned and possibly brutalized by dressing him in priestly garbs and providing him the IDs of another priest who the young man resembled. Sometimes a lie can save someone from a life of torture. Our fourth use principle speaks of seeking truth and meaning. It says responsibility to search for truth and meaning. It's an endeavoring, a striving for, and I'm on board with that. Truth telling ought to be what we devote our efforts towards, but it ought not to be at the expense of a life or another's well-being. I think it's interesting that we don't address truth and meaning until a fourth principle. I would offer that we, you use, value life over truth. And when it's put that way, it's so obvious to me that that's how it should be. Our first two principles underscore this. The first one is the inherent worth and dignity of every person. And the second one, justice, equity, and compassion, and human relations. <laughs> it does my soul good to see that my chosen faith understands this basic value. Our fictional character, Hanin, did survive, as well as her children, thanks to the lies she told. 
To me, her story represents that of countless human beings whose lives were saved because of a lie. My dear ones, may you always strive for truth. And most importantly, may you always remember the value of a life. Amen.